Hey everyone, and welcome to another skill capped video. Today we'll be taking a look at the top 8 game losing mistakes every player makes in Arena, and showing you how to stop making those mistakes. The first game losing mistake we're going to take a look at is probably the most common mistake we see inexperienced players make. These issues are also quite different for melee, casters, and healers, so we've split them and we'll look at them one by one. Starting with melee, overextending at the wrong time is one of the easiest mistakes to make, and honestly, we even see pros make this mistake sometimes. This all comes down to melee just forgetting about their health and the fact that they need to stay in their healer's line of sight when they're dropping low. Instead, what we often see is a melee will mindlessly chase their target, who is seemingly dropping low behind a pillar only for that melee to end up dying themselves because their healer could no longer reach them. As you can see here, the pharaoh chases the mage without taking a look where his healer is and dies in the opener. Dealing with this really just comes down to being aware of what's happening, as in understanding where your healer is positioned so that you know whether or not you can chase your target. As we can see in this clip, after the druid makes a major mistake of getting feared and getting caught in a lot of crowd control, the rogue realizes this and does not chase the enemy mage behind the pillar. After the druid now comes out of a long CC chain, they are able to easily recover and heal the rogue. Next, let's take a look at casters. Casters are generally a lot more CC based than melee DPS, requiring you to land CC to win the game. We often see ranged DPS players play way too close to pillars, allowing the enemy healer to safely heal from the pillar and the enemy melee to line casts at ease. What if we told you that by simply changing the way you position, this will become a lot easier? The best way to position is to make the enemy melee follow you into a certain position. This makes it so that they cannot line of sight any of your damage easily. As you can see in this clip, Laners is constantly positioning in a way that if the rogue wants to hit him, the priest has to come out of the pillar. As soon as the enemy healer leaves the pillar, this creates perfect opportunities to get polymorphs, cyclones, and stuns on the priest, forcing the rogue to use his defensives. If they want to hit you, that's fine, but make them fight where you want them to be. Lastly, healers. Healers have two aspects to their positioning. Not only is it extremely important to prevent as much CC as possible, but to also survive while being a target. Let's start with CC. Many people tank way too much CC while they are in a too exposed position. Playing aggressive or having to switch pillars exposes you to CC. Many players make the mistake of not going back to a safe position fast enough or being too careless while exposed. As you can see in this clip here, the enemy priest is switching from pillar to pillar, but he takes a very long time to get back to safety. While exposed, the priest gets caught in multiple polymorphs followed with a cyclone due to not being able to line of sight any of the incoming CC. Try to prevent these vulnerable moments as much as possible by always playing near a pillar which you can use to line of sight incoming crowd control. As you can see here, the enemy rogue is coming towards the druid, making it obvious that he wants to use crowd control like a stun or blind. Hiding around a pillar can prevent or at least delay this from happening. If you're in a situation where you're forced to leave your pillar to stay in range of your team, it is important to be extremely careful. This is your biggest window to be CC'd easily like we showcased earlier. It is key to plan ahead here. Make sure you have tools available to prevent incoming CC. For example, a priest wanting to push in and land a fear will generally have Shadow Word Death available to stop any potential CC on them. A good Resto Shaman will make sure to have Grounding Totem, Wind Shear, and even Tremor if needed to keep themselves out of CC when moving around. As you can see here, while Launter's team pushes in and he has to leave the pillar, he has Grounding Totem and Shear ready to stop any incoming CC. You will not always be able to stop incoming CC all by yourself. You will also need help from your teammates here. Make sure you communicate with them and have them stop any incoming CC during this vulnerable time, whether that be using their stuns, interrupts, or anything else from their toolkit. This is shown quite well here. As the druid gets kidney shotted by the rogue in a terrible position, the pharaoh notices this and uses his interrupt to stop the incoming polymorph. Therefore, he does not have to use a lot of defensives. Another major mistake we see many healers make is to kite incorrectly while being targeted, resulting in dying or making the game much harder. So, you're the target, what should you be doing then? As tempting as it may seem to play extremely defensive and line of sight everyone, you have to stay in line of your teammates. If you're alone with a rogue for example, you will almost certainly be forced to use a defensive during the upcoming kidney shot, whereas your teammates can save you by simply crowd controlling the rogue during the kidney shot. The second major game losing mistake we'll be taking a look at is lack of damage. Knowing how and when to do damage is key to winning a lot of games. Does it ever feel like you have a good uptime on someone, yet you just can't seem to bring their HP down a lot? 
that might be because you're doing your damage rotation incorrectly. So, is it as simple as just doing more damage then? Well, sort of. Many people tend to get overwhelmed in arena, especially when they're being targeted or CC'd constantly. Staying focused on your damage output throughout the game is extremely important. In a tough 3v3 game with two people targeting you, it may be hard to keep your pressure up without panicking. But keep in mind, without solid damage output, you won't be winning games. Make sure to take a look at our specific class and spec guides to dive deeper into this problem. On top of knowing how to do a lot of damage, it's also important to know when to do it. Something that is often overlooked by lower rated players is that it is key to CC the enemy team before you use your major damage cooldowns. As you can see here, the enemy warrior uses a lot of cooldowns before the druid is even out of stealth. Because the enemy team did not wait to get proper CC before bursting, the druid is able to simply outheal it all. We'll show you how to do it correctly. As you can see in this clip, a perfect CC chain with a double stun, a trap on the shaman, a curse. The druid then uses vortex to prevent the monk from escaping. The hunter uses all his cooldowns and the druid lands a clone after the trap. Setups like these make landing a kill so much easier than random damage output without CC. Communication is key here. Speaking of crowd control, the next game losing mistake that players often make is that they don't make the most of their crowd control. So why should you be crowd controlling the enemy team? Well, the enemy team will always be trying to survive your offensive cooldowns by using their defensives. Crowd control is a way to prevent the enemy team from using those. Using your CC properly and in a coordinated way can secure a window where you can kill someone easily because neither they nor their teammates are able to use their defensives. Step 1 to becoming better at crowd controlling is to know your own, your teammates, and the enemy team's toolkit. We highly recommend Omnibar, Gladius, and S Arena for this. Make sure to check out our in-depth add-on guide about this. A lot of players tend to use their stunts and other crowd control effects out of sync with their teammates. Coordinating a setup is key to winning games. As you can see here, the druid uses mighty bash on the shaman, while the hunter does not have trap ready. We see this happen way too often. Let's delve deeper in how you should be crowd controlling properly. So what does a coordinated setup look like? As we can see here, the rogue waits for his mage to land a polymorph before and then stuns you right as the polymorph lands. You will now be forced to use your trinket or other defensives. Now that we know what a coordinated setup looks like, what should you do before you set one up yourself? The most important thing to do is to ask your teammates if they're ready to contribute to the CC chain and to see where they're located. If your teammates are 40 yards away, it may not be the best time to push in. Teamwork is essential to proper CC chains. As you can see in this clip, the druid waits until both his hunter and the enemy shaman are in a good position to ensure landing a mighty bash into trap combo. Another key aspect of crowd controlling that we see many players make mistakes with is not using their DRs properly. In the heat of the moment, it is easy to forget about DRs before initiating a setup. If you recently stunned someone on the enemy team, you won't be able to stun that person and get full value from it for 20 seconds. Having patience and planning ahead are very important here. Let's show you some examples. As you can see, the enemy rogue does a cheap shot but then they change their mind and decide to try landing a kill on the restoration druid. However, the druid is still on stun DR from the cheap shot, making the kidney shot half duration. This now completely ruins their setup and allows the druid to escape with very minimal defensive usage. We'll show you how to do it correctly. As you can see here, the enemy rogue trinkets a bash in the opener. This now opens up a major kill opportunity for the druids. They could stun the mage instead or DR stun the rogue, but having patience and waiting for the DR to fall off allows them to land a full stun on the rogue, making an easy kill. DRs are not only important for offensive play. Many players also tend to make the mistake of using their crowd control defensively before the enemy team uses their cooldowns. As you can see in this clip, the rogue uses shadowy duel on the druid. Keep an eye out on the DRs. The stun DR on the rogue is almost off and he has no trinket. The druid now uses bash on the rogue which is a big mistake. That same bash could have been used to reduce damage during a setup. As tempting as all these offensive opportunities you can create with crowd control, many players completely forget that it is extremely important to assist your teammates with it at times. If you always use your crowd control offensively, there will be times where you have nothing left to help them with. Make sure you always plan ahead so you can assist your team if needed with upcoming cooldowns. Once again, Omnibar is extremely important for this. The next common mistake is not paying attention to enemy cast bars. Many players are not aware at all that they're missing out on a lot of information by not having proper enemy cast bars. Have you ever just taken a massive amount of damage without knowing where it came from until it was too late? 
we wouldn't be surprised if it was a greater pyroblast or a chaos bolt that you didn't see coming. Let's take a look at enemy cast bars. As you can see in this clip, the mage is casting a greater pyroblast, but because focus target and enemy cast bars are not being used, the restoration druid is unaware and gets completely destroyed. Other than a few exceptions, the majority of damage from ranged DPS specializations comes from casts. Knowing what each spell does is very important. What is more important however is knowing when the enemy is casting. The default WoW UI doesn't do a great job at showing enemy cast bars. We have some great tips for you on how to make those a lot easier to see. The two add-ons we recommend for making enemy cast bars a lot easier to see are either S Arena or Move Anything. A lot of players also play without or make little use of their focus targets. Always having someone on your focus target is extremely important as it can give you a lot more information like seeing what buffs and debuffs they have, allowing you to estimate how much damage they will be doing. As you can see in this clip, having the mage on focus makes it very easy to see when he is casting polymorph, forcing the druid to shift. Not having a focus target and getting sheeped can easily lose you a game. Another option we want to highlight is the target of target option. Even though this may not always be accurate, this can be a good indication of who your focus target is casting on. As you can see here, it is very easy to see who the warlock is casting on using this option. Once again, follow our add-on guide for more details on configuring the add-ons we mentioned. Another mistake we'll be looking at is not interrupting correctly. A nicely timed interrupt can easily make or break a game. As you all know, there are a lot of spells in WoW, so which of them should you be interrupting and why? Certain spells are a lot more important to interrupt than others. Let's start with interrupting CC. This highly depends on which classes you face and which situation you're in. Let's say you're facing sub rogue fire mage in 2v2. An example of a basic setup would be for the rogue to stun your healer and for the mage to then try to polymorph. If they succeed in landing the CC chain, you or your healer is forced to use a defensive cooldown. Interrupting that polymorph right during a setup can prevent that, therefore highly increasing your chance to win the game. So should you be always be interrupting crowd control spells? No. Make sure you look at the positioning of your team and the CC they're already in. Many people get confused by something known as follow-up CC. It is very important to see how long is left on the CC on your teammates before you interrupt new incoming CC on them. If your healer is polymorphed and the enemy mage is casting a second polymorph to keep that chain going, make sure to interrupt it at the last second. If not, the mage will simply be using it to bait your interrupt. As you can see here, the pharaoh misses his interrupt before the second polymorph is coming, allowing the CC chain to continue. Let's take a look at interrupting damaging spells, which are very important depending on the situation. Let's take the same example we used previously. In the following clip, the enemy rogue and mage are trying to do a setup on the restoration druid and they stun him. The mage now casts a fireball, which the pharaoh immediately interrupts, preventing the mage from doing a lot of damage during the cheap shot and the druid surviving with minimal cooldown usage. So which damaging spells should you be interrupting? Every specialization has some key spells which are a major part of their rotation or have a high impact. Some examples of this are Vampiric Touch, Mind Games, Chaos Bolt, Greater Pyroblast, and Lightning Lasso. Each of these spells has a high impact and can change the game significantly. Make sure you prioritize spells like these over spells like Incinerate which are builders, but don't do a lot of damage by themselves. Another very common mistake is the misusage of major cooldowns. Let's show you how to do it the right way. We'll start off with defensives. Aligning your defensive cooldowns with enemy setups or offensive cooldowns is extremely important. Failing to do so will result in overlaps or taking way more damage than necessary. Using these properly mostly comes down to planning and predicting. We highly recommend that you use the Omnibar add-on to keep track of which cooldowns the enemy team has available and uses. This makes planning much easier. Let's take a look at how you should be using your defensives. If you're facing a Retribution Paladin who uses his Avenging Wrath, which is a massive 2 minute cooldown, it is completely fine to respect those cooldowns and line up a defensive cooldown with a similar cooldown. If a ret stuns you and pops wings and your healer can't dispel you due to being crowd controlled or being too far away, just drink it. Don't try to be greedy, this will almost always backfire. As you can see in this clip, the druid is too far away from the monk to dispel the HOJ. Instead of waiting multiple seconds for a dispel, the monk trinkets right away. It is also very important to use your defensives before you take a lot of damage. A common mistake people make is using their defensives after the majority of damage is already done. Planning ahead with your defensives is key to prevent mistakes here. If the enemy team has certain damage or crowd control cooldowns coming up, make sure you have the appropriate defensive cooldowns available to survive those. As you can see in this clip here, the rogue opens with a lot of cooldowns on the druid who is then forced to trinket. The rogue still has blind available, so it is extremely important for the hunter to use his turtle in sync with the blind. 
If not, it is almost a guaranteed loss. Now that we have defensives covered, what do people do wrong with their damaging cooldowns? Like we mentioned earlier in this video, it is often important to CC someone before using your damaging cooldowns. As you can see here, the enemy shaman grounds the trap, but the hunter uses all offensive cooldowns anyway. Therefore, the enemy team barely has to use any defensives to survive. Don't use your damaging cooldowns randomly without any goal behind it. Make sure you save them for a well-coordinated setup and force defensives. Don't use them on cooldown just to look good on the damage meter. As you can see in this clip, the game starts with a double stun into a trap on the enemy shaman then followed up with cyclone. The hunter then uses true shot. If they did not CC here, the shaman would simply out heal it all. The next common mistake we'll be taking a look at is people not helping their team when they're in danger, better known as peeling. It is extremely important to help each other, you can't do it all by yourself. So when should you be helping your teammates? Step 1 is knowing when your team is in danger. Keep an eye out for enemy offensive cooldowns and which CC your teammates are in. For example, if you're just tunneling a priest against rogue priest, the priest can fear you right as a rogue does a setup on your teammate because you had no idea it was about to happen. This then results in you not being able to help your teammate whatsoever. As you can see in the clip, the rogue shadow step cheap shots right as the priest is able to fear the monk. The monk is now not able to help the druid in any way during this setup. This section is all about being aware of what the enemy team is planning to do and being ready to help stop it. So now that you know when to help them, how should you be helping them? Peeling can be as simple as switching to a target just to use a slow on them, therefore allowing your healer to escape by cutting away. As you can see in this clip, the monk is far away from the druid, hitting the shaman. The warrior now stormbolts the druid and uses Spear of Bastion, making it hard for the druid to escape. The monk notices this and immediately comes over from across the map to slow the warrior, allowing the druid to make an easy escape. Other than just slowing, there are also some major external cooldowns you can use. One of the most important external cooldowns that hunters have is Roar of Sacrifice, preventing any target on their team from being hit by critical strikes for 12 seconds. Using this at key times can easily make or break the game. Make sure that you don't waste external cooldowns like this. Save them for when your team is being targeted by heavy bursts or crowd control. The main reason why people do not help their teammates is because they are too focused on offensive play. Like we mentioned earlier, it is important to have consistent damage output throughout the game, but not at the cost of not helping your teammates at important times. As you can see here, the warrior interrupts the druid and blade storms out of a root. The druid now falls extremely low, but the monk is playing aggressive. If the druid would have communicated better and asked for help, this defensive usage could have been prevented. If damaging cooldowns are coming up, plan ahead and make sure you're not too far away from them and that you're ready to assist them. As you can see here, the enemy monk is using a lot of cooldowns. The druid is therefore in a position where he is within cyclone range to cyclone defensively. The last major mistake we will be covering in this video is not having a game plan. What exactly is a game plan? A game plan is knowing what your goals will be in certain situations before the game starts. This can be as simple as knowing who you want to target and why you're targeting them. There are four armor types in WoW, cloth, leather, mail, and plate. Cloth wearers take a lot more physical damage than plate wearers. As you can see in this clip, the enemy team consists of a holy priest and an arms warrior. The priest is a cloth target and the warrior uses plate armor. The priest is therefore a much better target as he takes a lot more physical damage. So, does this mean you should just always be hitting the cloth targets because they take more damage? No, not at all. Let's take a look at some more factors to consider. What is also very important when choosing the right target is what a target can do when you are not hitting them. If you're facing a Shadow Priest for example, you will almost always want to be hitting them because leaving them to free cast without using your stuns and interrupts on them makes it extremely easy for them to get a lot of damage out and disrupt your gameplay. As you can see in this clip, this WMD team decided that their kill target will be the Paladin because the Priest has a lot of defensives to rotate through. The priest will now be free casting a lot and is able to do a lot of damage. The mage and druid know this and try to crowd control the shadow priest as much as possible to prevent him from doing too much damage. So should you always be hitting one target? No. Something that pro players do a lot is switching around and cleaving. Rather than sitting on one target, they switch around after forcing enemy defensive cooldowns and use their bleeds and cleave on multiple targets. This forces the enemy healer to heal multiple targets and creates kill opportunities on more than one target as well. Not only is it good to switch on preventives to create more pressure but also to prevent yourself from falling behind. As you can see here, the enemy team forces the Windwalker to use his touch of karma. Rather than staying on the Windwalker and trying to force even more cooldowns from him, the enemy monk immediately rolls over to the druid to switch the pressure to him and potentially force defensives there. Don't get greedy here. 
you already force the defensive. Don't let the enemy team build momentum now. To conclude, you cannot be mindlessly hitting someone without knowing when to switch. You may get away with training someone at lower rating, but at higher rating, that won't work anymore. Make sure that you're on the same line with your teammates and that you know who to hit, who to crowd control, and who to switch to. And most importantly, when. That's it for this video. We hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content coming up.